anyway, so we've done the smoke bomb test. Um, I went in the room above, it was clear. There was no smoke coming from the floor, the skirting, or from any vents. I went outside and I viewed the property. There was no smoke coming from the, 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 the mortar joints, from the floor chin. It was all fine, and it followed the route that I predicted. So now I'm going to take this smoke plate out. I'm going to just put that to one side as evidence I've done it. As you can see, there's the the item that I've been using to put the smoke bomb in. Good solid heat resistant material there. It's actually a diverter valve off a combi. So just talking briefly about the flu, um, I will be doing a flu analyzer test. It should be a ratio of 0.02. Okay. Uh, the the flu analyzer is going to be done in a minute. I'll be taking it out and checking it. I've done some of the performance checks. Now I want to talk to you briefly about the construction of the chimney. So here's a precast flue. These became popular in the 80s. You've got the precast flue wall hung gas fire. The fumes come up inside the wall. The, the advantage of a precast flue if there's, there's no protrusion there, you're not losing any space, floor space, it's flush with the wall. Comes up inside the wall, into the transfer block, it then goes from being inside the wall to the transfer inside twin wall to a ridge vent. So whenever you see ridge vents with little holes in and vents in, they're actually ridge terminals for precast flues and gas fires. <coughs> You can't plaster directly onto a precast flue because it will crack. Um, on this fire here, you can see the closure plate in green, and I've also fitted a cooling plate because the spigot will give out, give out too much heat, it might crack and damage the brickwork. So we have to fit a cooling plate. <coughs> Whenever you do a smoke bomb or a flue flow test on these, you always have to go up in the loft space and check for any leakage. The pipe work in the loft must always be twin wall to hold the heat. Remember, the chimney, the flue, needs warmth to create the draw. It gets very cold in the loft space. If it's cold, the product of combustion will simply go in the room. Okay, you can't have flue liner, it's exposed. It's got to be twin wall insulated flue pipe. It's got to be secure as well. It's got to be clipped, bracketed across. This transfer block as well, the quite known for leaking there. Okay, always put some fire cement. Okay, these precast flues now people do use silicon on them rather than mortar. So that's a precast flue insulation. Now I'm going to talk to you about a brick chimney, which is roughly what we've got here with a different fire. Here's a brick chimney, you've got the half along the bottom, which is here, it should be heat resistant and a minimum of 50mm thick. The green is the closure plate, which we use to contain the products of combustion. At the bottom of the closure plate you should always get a hole, that's to create a drawer up. If you have fresh air in to the bottom of the chimney, it will create a drawer. Obviously, heat rises, fresh air in, create a pull. You have a spigot here for the gas fire. The distance between the spigot and the chair brick should be at least 50 mil. You have a catchment area to catch dust, um, sorry, debris. That should be at least 250 mil. The spigot should come past the brickwork by 20 mil. The closure plate should be sealed and the closure plate needs to finish below the appliance. If you're fitting a gas appliance to a chimney, if it was previously used for solid fuel, it should be swept. So I've done another test, now I'm going to fire it once more and I'm going to explain to the customer what I've done, any foundings. Um, 
any deficiencies there, any weak spots or any areas for improvement. I have been extremely happy with this appliance and the service. <coughs> right, it's uh, all done now. Uh, time for the handover back to the customer. Um, vacuumed it all down, put some air freshener, get rid of the smell of the, the burning debris, the soot. Um, so now I'm going to fire up, I'm going to tell the customer ex again exactly what I found. A little bit of, of um, improvement about how I've swept up, how I've cleaned all, all the um, soot off, the, the coals. And it's always good to make um, an issue about the preventive maintenance work you've done. Had I not brushed the coals, took the thermocouple, maybe it would have broke down in the middle of winter or at inappropriate times. So here we go. Pilot, ignite, hold it down for the heat energy to get to the magnet valve. The pilot light is now on. Small burner. Perfect. Flames are smaller, not so fierce. It ignited a lot better. It ignited a lot better because I actually cleaned all the burners and I repositioned all the coals as well. The coal, one of the fake coals, was blocking the pilot light, igniting the gas, creating that build up. Thanks for your time, stay tuned. Thank you.